with upset. Well, the sun is shining, and we are ready to go here for game one of our doubleheader in an elimination contest between three seed Texas A&M and four seed George Mason from Reckling Park in Houston, Texas. Here's what the brackets look like. Rice and Texas were the winners in dominating fashion, at least late in the game for Rice yesterday. So they'll meet in the nightcap. But first, this one, the winner stays alive. The loser heads home. Welcome, everybody. Tom Hart alongside Ben McDonald. In a tournament that's been crazy thus far with upsets, the chalk has held for the time being here in Houston. And for George Mason, it was a really tough loss. They were in that game and had the lead in the eighth inning against yeah. one seed Rice last night. How did they back bounce back emotionally? Well, I think that? they got to be careful with their emotions. I mean, you have that emotional roller coaster last night where they took a lead into the top of the eighth inning, and then all of a sudden Rice flexed their muscles at the bottom of the eighth and ultimately won the game big. But I think it's dangerous for them because they got to find a way to get back to an even keel to get back emotionally and mentally where they should be. If not, it's going to be a short, short stay for them here in the Houston area. Uh, meanwhile, for Texas A&M, you would figure it would have been an emotional game yesterday with their rivals from Austin. They dropped that one, and I don't know if they were ever really in it. What are you looking for from the Aggies today? Some won't to. I mean, it's time for them to step up. I mean, they got a good ball club. Look at the teams they've beaten. They beat LSU in the series this year. They beat Vanderbilt. They beat Mississippi State. They beat a national seed in Florida. So they have a good team. It's time to start playing like it. I'm with you. I mean, I didn't see any won't to, any grit, you know, any emotion out there. So they're going to have to find some emotion and show that they are a good team. Well, there better be some emotion today because if you lose, it's your last game of the year. We finally see some shadows in the ballpark after the tarp was on and lightning was in the area. We're ready to get this doubleheader started. Summer starts now with hot deals this weekend at Bass Pro Shops. Like 40% off Redhead Max Creek shorts. Save $20 on New Balance 608 trainers. And sign up for email to get a special $10 in-store coupon good for this weekend. Each year, 95% of homeowners won't have a claim. That's why Allstate gives you money back every year you don't have one. Oops. Claim free rewards from Allstate. Your home protects you. Protect it back. Looks like the Garcia's got a new car. What'd they get? I don't know. It sure doesn't look like a Buick. Buick, Buick, Buick. I'm outside. Where are you? I'm right here. I'm in the Buick. I don't see a Buick. Take a fresh look at Buick. It just might surprise you. Ooh, that's not a Buick. That's what I told him. Wow. This is nice. Oh, my. Enjoy the dealer experience ranked highest by J.D. Power and get 0% financing for 60 months on the entire Buick lineup. And welcome back to Reckling Park as the George Mason Patriots meet the Aggies of Texas A&M for the opportunity to extend their season. It is a three seed versus a four seed head coach Rob Childress for the Texas A&M Aggies is in his ninth season as the head man. They've won 356 games under him and they've been a fantastic pitching team though they didn't get a great start from their ace yesterday and that really put A&M in a hole. Here's a look at the starting lineup for the Aggies who are the visitors today here in their second game of the Houston Regional. Alamon will be at shortstop today. That's a big change. Ryan Burke will DH and then the heart of the lineup. Lankford, Nottabrook and Banks and these are three guys that have really struggled and did yesterday 0 for 11 combined with six K's. Yeah I mean if Texas A&M is going to be successful it's because the meat of their lineup is going to do their job. They didn't do it yet yesterday obviously six strikeouts 0 for 11 they're gonna have to be big today if A&M get back on the winning track. George Mason comes today with a two way player on the mound. Anthony Montefusco will get the start and he's batting in the seventh spot. He's a 207 hitter but he is a workhorse on the mound as he makes his 16th start. He's nine and three with an ERA under two. Pretty good strikeout to walk ratio. Great control for Montefusco as we see his scouting report. Yeah, you see him, and he's not going to burn it up, but he's certainly above average, up to 91 miles an hour. He throws a lot of strikes, and that is his strong point. His slider is his best pitch, so he likes to get ahead with the fastball, finish you with the breaking ball. You know, big picture in this postseason so far, already a national seed has gone down. Florida State two and through. They lost today to Alabama in a game that Alabama nearly gave back. So in many ways, we are lucky so far to have the chalk hold here because what we've seen in college baseball recently, and especially in this tournament, is that there are no guarantees. No, that's the truth. I mean, yesterday was a good example of that. I mean, who would have thought Florida State would lose yesterday? Didn't lose again today. UL Lafayette with that offense that they have, one of the best in the country they didn't even score a run yesterday against Jackson State get beat one or nothing of course Florida get 
got beat late last night as well. So lots of big upsets yesterday. This is a George Mason team trying to follow the format of their Final Four Cinderella team coming in as a four seed. We've seen a four seed win the national championship. That was Fresno State a few years ago. Stony Brook was a four seed, made it through the Baton Rouge Super Regional to make it to the College World Series. So it can be done. But now they're in a really tough spot, as is everyone in the loser's bracket, because pitching will come at a premium. They got a fantastic start from Jared Gaynor, their ace yesterday. Although the line score wouldn't show it, he ended up allowing six earned runs over seven and a third. Taylor Hunt and Evan Porcella came out of the bullpen, so they should be in pretty good shape, thanks to Gaynor eating up seven and a third. It's a uh, weekend rotation that is one of the best in the nation in ERA, sixth best in the country. So the starters are the keys here for George Mason. Great starters. They really have four of them and then a fine closer, but they couldn't get the ball to their closer last night. Let's see if Texas A&M could get those bats going. They were just three for 17 with runners on base yesterday. Blake Alamon will lead things off. Junior gets a start at shortstop today after playing second yesterday. And a first pitch fastball at 88 miles an hour. It's in for a strike to Alamon, who's hitting 284 this season. Not much pop, but he's sixth in SEC games and runs scored with 22. In the leadoff spot for the 28th time this season is Alamon. A Texas A&M lineup that has been shuffled around. They've used 54 different lineups in 58 games this season. They're one of the last four into the NCAA tournament. They have yet to win in the postseason thus far in 2014. They were one and done in Hoover in the SEC tournament, dropping a contest to Arkansas, and then lost yesterday to their rivals from Texas. Two yeah, balls I mean, and two strikes. If you're A&M, you, you need something good to happen early offensively. You know, you, you want to go out and get a few base hits. I mean, you got to give Texas pitcher Nathan Thornhill. He was really good yesterday. He really shut down the Aggies. But having said that, they just didn't get up and compete like we thought they should have in a big game against a rivalry like Texas. But if they can somehow scratch a few runs early in the ballgame, I think you'll see it be a different club. Well, that was a close one. The fastball just missed a little bit low, and it takes account full to Blake Alamon. I mean, if you go back and look at A&M, I mean, the first four innings are the ones that are most important to them. Throughout the year, they've outscored their opponents 163 runs to just 92 runs in the first four. So striking early is important for them. Alamon staying alive. This, uh, this leadoff at bat is reminiscent of the leadoff at bat that was put together in the A&M game yesterday by Brooks Marlowe. He saw eight pitches against A&M ace Daniel Mangdon, and finally, on a 3-2 pitch, homer to right field. Texas never looked back. And this one is yanked into right field. How about that for a similar at-bat? Lemus able to scoop it up. Alamon hitting second base, standing up. And it's a leadoff double for the Aggies. Well, that's the kind of start that you'd like to see A&M have. Again, first inning are tough ones for pitchers trying to establish the in and out, trying to figure out what's working. That ball just kind of left middle of the plate, maybe a shade in, and Alamon turns on it, gets the barrel to it, and lead off double for A&M. Fourth double of the season for Blake Alamon, and now a runner on base for Ryan Burke. Burke is batting in the two hole for just the sixth time this season. And while he has a 302 average on the year, he's hitting 364 in the two spot. RBI opportunity for Burke, and that one's past the first baseman fully. Lemus will come up. No, he ran right by the baseball. And the throw into second is too late. Texas A&M strikes first on a single and an error. Well, A&M knows. But Montefusco throws a lot of strikes, a lot of strikes early with his fastball. That's the scouting report. So AM's doing a good job right now, going up and looking for first pitch fastballs early in the count, getting something they can handle. And, and you go back and look at Montefusco's numbers on the year. He averages one hit per inning. So he's no stranger to giving up hits. His plus thing is he doesn't walk anybody. Like he's really good at throwing strikes. He uses his defense, and he'll have to be big right here to shut down a big inning. Cole Lankford steps in. He's hitting 377 this season with runners in scoring position. Had a career high 13 game hit streak snap yesterday.
Been a good clutch hitter for Texas A&M over the course of the season. And a sinker misses low from Anthony Montefusco. Runner at second, still nobody out here in the first inning. Montefusco, fifth year senior, had Tommy John surgery after freshman All-America season. Leads a team with nine wins, and he led the Atlantic 10 Conference in strikeouts with 78. He's the all-time strikeout leader at George Mason with 248 in his career. We discussed this yesterday. If you weren't with us, George Mason is a team that to say they struggled last year would be an understatement. Injuries depleted their roster. They limped home with an 18 and 35 record. Montefusco, one of the fifth year seniors who chose to come back, knowing they'd have something special this season. Well, you see him there. He's got a good change up. We've seen the fastball, 88 to 91 miles an hour. Pretty good breaking ball, but his change up, he'll use it a lot against left handed batters. And he's thrown two pretty good ones to Lankford so far. That was the first swing and miss against Montefusco so far today. Ryan Burke gets his lead off second. Out of play to the left side. This is an elimination game. Double elimination format here in the regionals. Rice and Texas stay on the winner's side after their victories last night. Already 13 pitches in this first inning for Montefusco. Line drive to right field. Another one for Lemus to handle. Burke stops at third. And that will allow the runner to go to second. And a hustling play by Cole Lankford to pick up an extra base as Lemus flew right over his cutoff man. Another ball kind of left middle of the plate. Check it out. It's up. It's middle of the plate. And A&M, we talked about it, good hitting team. They don't miss pitches like that. And watch Cole Lankford. He's going to round first base, and they're going to pick up the throw. You see how the throw is high, misses the cutoff guy. Lemus, when you miss the cutoff guy, that's a cardinal rule in baseball. Can't do that. Watch Langford. He's watching the throw. He's going to read it. He reads it up high, knows there's no way the first baseman Foley can cut that off and off to the next base. And there's another guy in scoring position now. And so with this early struggle, pitching coach Steve Hay has come out of the Mason dugout to have a word with Anthony Montefusco. Remember, we had a rain delay of uh, more than an hour and a half. And a long wait for Montefusco. How does that affect a starting pitcher? Well, it, it can affect you because you're ready to go. You want to go. You lost last night. It was an emotional loss last night. And you want to go out and do as best you can. The, the, the good news for George Mason, you got a senior guy, a fifth-year senior guy that should be able to kind of get it going. But I, I call it the inevitable, too. It's, it's, the, it's the first inning when you step on the mound, not quite sure what's going to work from the bullpen to the game mound. you got this big emotional flow going. And so the first innings are tough. And if you're going to get a lot of starting pitches, the first inning lots of times is the best one to get them before they get in the groove. Ground ball hit to short. Runner will come home, and the throw over gets a first out of the first inning as Logan Nottebrook picks up an RBI, scoring Burke. Well, if you're A&M, that's just what you want to do. The infield was playing back, which means they're conceding the run at third base. Base hits are great, but, boy, if you can get a, a run home without getting a base hit, a sack fly, or just a ground ball, everyday routine ground ball, it plates the second run for A&M. So the inning continues for Nick Banks. Banks hitting 341. He's homer twice this season. You know, maybe a similar start from Montefusco as we saw from Daniel Mangdon, the big right hander for Texas A&M yesterday when Mangdon Really had a hard time finding the strike zone with his fastball throughout the game. He didn't make it out of the third inning. Shortest outing in Mangdon's career. The fastball misses away, 2-0. Oh. 
Yeah, and it's a recipe for disaster. When you can't get ahead of guys and you get caught in fi fastball counts and, you, and everybody knows you're going to throw a fastball, it's tough at any level to get guys out. And A&M, again, a really good hitting team. And if they can get you in fastball counts, they know it's coming. They're pretty good. Off the end of the bat to center, Willis waits for it. Runner won't advance. A strong throw from Willis. Two down. Montefusco that time was able to throw a 2-0 changeup. That's what fooled Banks. Remember, this, you know, any time you can throw something other than a fastball and a fastball count, very good chance you're going to be successful at any level you pitch at. And that's a good pitch. Had a base open right there and decided to throw a 2-0 changeup. So man on and two out now for Troy Stein, who makes his 156th career start today for Texas A&M, the senior. Caught every game over four years in high school as an All-State performer. And Stein looks at a strike. He's been getting regular opportunities behind the plate. Mitchell now has been banged up. A senior started 24 of the last 25 behind the plate. And while he's hitting 298 on the season, he's hitting 33 points better against right handers. <laughs> Nothing in two. Stein, sixth batter of the opening frame for Texas A&M. Aggies couldn't figure out Texas starter Nathan Thornhill yesterday. He struck out a season high seven over seven innings worked. That one will find the seats and stay nothing in two to Troy Stein. It can be difficult certainly playing in the losers bracket. You get the early start. The crowds may be a little bit light. Add to that a rain delay of longer than 90 minutes to get started here today. Chopped up the middle. That one will get through. Langford around third. Willis won't test him at home. And Texas A&M leads 3-0. And Stein may be banged up. Remember, he's been their everyday catcher since Mitchell now got a little banged up as well. Watch him coming out of the box. He pulled a hamstring or tweaked him. If you can tell, he's in some pain. Oh, right there. Yep, might have sprained an ankle, right? Yep, right there. Coming around, making a big aggressive turn there at first base. What a change for Texas A&M's offense yesterday. One for eight with runners in scoring position. Three for five here in the first inning today. Patrick McClendon. Watches that breaking ball hit the dirt. McClendon getting the start at, start at second base. They had to shuffle their infield, and it hasn't been an effective infield for most of the season for Texas A&M. Logan Taylor was coming off injury, got the start yesterday, and he just wasn't himself. So Blake Alamon moved back to short, and McClendon getting the start at second. Breaking ball in for a strike. Well, if you're A&M, this is just what you wanted to happen. You wanted to come out and strike early, get some confidence back after a rough day yesterday in the loser's bracket. And it's win or go home, you know, for both these clubs. I mean, this is it. If you're going to be emotional and have some want to and some grit, it is time to do it. There goes the runner. It's grounded up the middle. And the kick to the bag is in just enough time as Cook gloved and forced Stein. Well, that want to seems to be there in the first inning for the Aggies. Three runs on four hits. Their starting catcher will squat in a moment. 3 0 AM. Coming from where I come from, uh, Alabama, it's, it's not too many people come out for basketball there. And, um, you know, I was told I can't a lot. So 
You know, I feel like, you know, I pushed and, you know, it's given me a great opportunity. I'm just always hungry, so, like, I just try to improve every game. I play, in, you know, through my mom. I mean, my mom has a good work ethic, and I think she's instilled that in me. Furniture Row's Memorial Day sale is big. We're talking really big. Get a free 50-inch HDTV on select room groups, plus 0% interest for four years. Better hurry, sale ends Wednesday, June 4th. Furniture Row, home of Denver Mattress, your Tempur-Pedic elite retailer. Life can be hard. Easy is doing more online in less time. Get 15 meg high-speed internet for as low as $30 per month when you bundle. Bundle and save with Sudden Link. Easy is counting to one. Sudden Link, you're connected. It's not too late to celebrate Memorial Day on a new Doctor's Choice from Denver Mattress. Our two-piece queen set is now just $549. Plus, a Serta Clean mattress starts as low as $299. Hurry, sale ends Wednesday, June 4th. Denver Mattress, your Tempur-Pedic Elite retailer inside Furniture Row. Just A&M leads George Mason 3-0. Mason head coach Bill Brown in his 33rd season. Another 30-win season for the 14th time over the last 25 years. They got in after sweeping through the Atlantic 10 tournament their first year in the A-10 after being part of the CAA for so long. And 29 wins for Bill Brown, but a lineup that just didn't produce yesterday, especially the first five hitters, they went over. Yeah, I mean, it, it, typically your best hitters are obviously at the top of your lineup, but when you go over with your first five, not a good, not a good thing for sure. Look at that, 0 for 19 with three strikeouts. They really struggled against the Rice pitching, but still, they had a chance. Took that lead late into the ball game, but just couldn't hold on to it. Getting the start for Texas A&M today is big right-hander Grayson Law. Six and two on the season. He arrived just over three, makes his 15th start. Second in the big, or pardon me, second in the SEC. With 85 innings pitched over the course of the season. And the pitch is outside. Let yeah. me clarify that. I, I, first I was thinking A&M was still in the Big 12. It's two years too late for that one. Second on his team in 85 innings pitched. Mangdon was their workhorse, but he couldn't get out of the third yesterday. Well, Long's been good this year. I mean, he, you know, he, he's, he's a big kid, 6'5", 215 pounds, just a sophomore, but a little bit better fastball than Montefusco has. See him up to 91. Pretty good breaking ball to change up as well. Not a big strikeout guy. 52 strikeouts and 85 innings pitched. A few more hits and innings pitched. Luke Willis had a great A-10 tournament, but was hitless yesterday, 0 for 4 against Rice. And he sends this one down the line, and it is a foul ball by less than a foot. So he'll come back to the plate. Long got off to a great start this season for Texas A&M. He didn't allow an earned run over his first three starts, totaling 19 and a third innings. And in his first five starts, he only allowed one earned run for the first month plus the season he had an ERA of 0.26 for a Texas A&M team which is in its 30th NCAA tournament in eighth straight They've been to College World Series five times in program history last time in 2011 but they're scuffling here into right field Banks waits for it there's one down yeah they have the lead in this game but Texas A&M has lost four, lost three of its last four SEC series, and the loss in the first round in the SEC, four nothing to Arkansas. Here's Brandon Gum, the George Mason shortstop. He looks at a fastball at 90, nothing and one. Gum is a sophomore from Woodbridge, Virginia. Hit a team high 314 during the regular season. And came in having reached base 47 times in his last 50 games. But 0 for 4 yesterday. 
Chop to the right side for McClendon and his first chance makes it easy two down. You know whose chips those are? Those are hers right now. Not yours. <laughs> not, definitely not mine. Got some jalapenos to go with that. A&M could have used a little spice yesterday, right? I mean, they were just flat all the way around. I totally agree. I mean, I don't know. I was a little bit disappointed. And, uh, and um, they're certainly better than what they showed. They're certainly more competitive than what they showed. A&M's played a tough schedule this year. I mean, you go back and look, and their strength of schedule is really good. They played some big-time opponents. And I just thought they'd come out with a little bit more fire and passion. And I'm sure that's what they talked about last night after the game. That, hey, I don't want our season to end. Who's going to step it up? Let's get going here. And certainly off to a really good start offensively. Long thought he had strike three on Blaze Fernandez. But that's, you know, that's kind of been the knock on AM all year long. They kind of played to their competition, unfortunately, for them. Because, I mean, we talked about they got some big series wins. Here's a line drive to the gap. Fernandez has his first hit of this Houston regional. And You'd have to think, and you mentioned it earlier, that it's going to have to be the heart of the lineup. This is a s stretch right here with three key players. Fastball kind of middle end does a nice job. You see him pull his hands in right there. Watch him pull his hands in and get the barrel of the bat to that ball. Good piece of hit on the inside fastball, an above average fastball. Now Tucker Tobin with a runner on. What about the importance of the heart of this lineup? This is. Fernandez, Tobin, and Cooks, 56th start of the season. All three of them have started every game, and they went a combined 0 for 11 yesterday. Yeah, and, and that, those are all three seniors, too. Those are the guys that have to get it done. Got the most experience. They sit in the middle of the lineup, and you're not going to be successful. When you're three, four, and five guys, and one through five in their case, go 0 for, for the day, you're not going to win many ball games. Fifth-year senior Chris Cook waits on deck. Into center, Craig Bratson nonchalantly hauls it in for the third out of the first. Mason finally gets a hit from the top of the lineup, but they strand it through one. It's three nothing Aggies. Life is more rewarding when you feel secure. At Northwestern Mutual, we'll keep you ahead of the game with a personalized plan that helps you stay focused on your goals. Summer starts now with hot deals this weekend at Bass Pro Shops, like Redhead Stockton Polo Shirts for under $10, the new 10-bearing Pro Light Baitcast Reel for under $60, and sign up for email to get a special $10 in-store coupon good for this weekend. Don't settle for a slow computer. Just go to MyCleanPC.com to get your free computer diagnosis. First, we'll tell you what's slowing down your computer. Then activate the MyCleanPC.com software to optimize your computer performance. I got a free diagnosis for my computer, and they told me exactly what was wrong with it. My computer is running faster and smoother than it ever has before. My computer is 100% faster. Get your free computer diagnosis at MyCleanPC.com. Get an in-depth look at the Women's College World Series on ESPNU with expert insight and analysis before and after the drama unfolds in OKC. Coverage begins Tuesday at 7.30 on ESPNU. The NCAA Baseball Regionals is presented by the Quicksilver Card from Capital One. Earn 1.5% cash back on every purchase. And in part by Panera Bread. It's salad season. Stop by your local bakery cafe for your favorite. William Marsh Rice University established in 1912. And what a beautiful campus and a baseball park that matches the splendor on campus here at Reckling Park. Top of the second inning. And Texas A&M leads George Mason three to nothing. Winners tonight. Rice and Texas play in what should be a packed house. A 
game was originally scheduled to start at 8 Eastern. We had an hour and a half rain delay here, so that might be pushed back a little bit depending on the timing of this one. First pitch to Jace Statham is in for a strike from right-hander Anthony Montefusco. Well, this inning is big for Montefusco. I mean, he's got to find a way. He's got to shut A&M down, get his club back in the dugout. He had a rough first inning, gave up four hits, three runs. He's got to put some goose eggs, some zeros up on the scoreboard. So George Mason will have an opportunity to fight back in this game. Montefusco is a guy who's really developed as a pitcher. Part of that was because of the injury that he suffered. Torn ulnar collateral ligament resulted in Tommy John surgery. Tobin puts this one away, one down. But he said he was a strictly a fastball slider guy as a freshman, and he was a freshman All-American. And then after Tommy John, things changed. He had to change his repertoire a little bit, which mm -hmm. is common for guys coming off TJ. Oh, absolutely. You know, and he's developed a really good changeup. To me, that's been his best pitch so far today. We're only in the second inning, but that was a changeup to Statham right there. He's got a couple of got Lankford. Uh, out in front on the uh, on a change up then Langford eventually got a base hit on the fastball but that's been his best pitch so far today. This is the nine hole hitter Cray Bratson. He's got great speed and he lays down a bunt. Fernandez hurries too late and Bratson with a bunt single to get on base with one out. There's your nine hole leadoff hitter in many ways. Absolutely. Most nine hole guys are leadoff guys. And you're right, the way Bratson can run. Once that ball got down to where it is, there's no chance Fernandez is going to come in. Fernandez does everything he can do. Come in, bare hands it, throws across his body, but watch the speed down the line and no chance for Fernandez. And now Ray Toto, the catcher, has to worry about Bratson running as Blake Aleman, who can handle the bat well, stands in. Bratson is third in the nation among active players with 88 career stolen bases. And this season, he's been successful 95% of the time. Yeah, 18 out of 19. That's pretty good. There's that changeup. First pitch changeup. Alamon doubled his first time up on a lengthy at bat. He's a 284 hitter coming into today. 354 with runners on base. Infield wants a double play. They've only turned 33 in the season. There goes the runner. Pitch is high. Throw to second. Ooh. Got him. Ooh. Wow. I thought he was in there by an arm's length. Yeah. But Billy Hayes is a second base umpire. He saw it differently. And all Craig Bradson can do is offer a wry smile. Yeah, I want to see this. Good pitch to handle for the catcher. Toto ball, fastball up. He does make a perfect throw to the shortstop gum, and here's the, oh, it's bang, bang, but I'm with you on that one. Looks like Bradson got that hand in there. So big catch and throw by Ray Toto. And even more important after this shot from Alamon drops in to left center field. He is two for two to start this game. Yeah, again, Alamon hunting that fastball, gets another ball that he can handle. This is an A&M team that we've seen a lot of this year, and the reason why they're a pretty good hitting team, they can spray the ball to all fields. Normally hit it where it's pitched. Got a little pop in the middle of that lineup between Lankford and Notterbrook and Banks. Let me ask you a question for the benefit of our viewers as Ryan Burke stands in. You just said... They can hit it where it's pitched. What does that mean? Well, I mean, to be a good hitter at any level, college, high school, whatever. Oh, he just hit that one where it was pitched from off of the foot, and Montefusco recovers. We get a couple of guys banged up here early. The Aggie catcher and now the Mason pitcher. See if Montefusco is okay. He was certainly efficient. An eight-pitch inning. That's just a rocket right off his foot, but he regains it. Kick save and a beauty. Roosters. Everybody wants the biggest chicken breasts in fast food. 
and we mean everybody. <laughs> Introducing the Big Chicken Sandwich, dusted in Southern Spices at Carl's Jr. and Hardee's. People love. Now that's progressive. Call or click today. Hey, what are you doing today? I'm backing up the computer. Photos, work files, you name it. Lovely. See you in a few hours. Hmm. Did you get everything backed up? Took care of it. For just $59.99 a year, Carbonite backs up your irreplaceable files automatically, so you don't have to. Try it for free at Carbonite.com. It's a 3-0 lead for Texas A&M. The George Mason pitcher, Anthony Montefusco, will be up third. He hits for himself in this batting order, and he got hit here. Yeah, he did. I mean, pitching you, you got to be in a pretty good fielding position, and when you turn your rear end to home plate, you know, it's hard for you to be a good fielder. Now, that's a tough play. I don't know if anybody, even with a good fielding position, can catch that ball, because when balls hit that hard, that far down low, it's tough. Backhand play, and not in time to get the leadoff man, Chris Cook. And so Cook is aboard to start the second. And that'll bring Josh Lemus up. Um, go back to what I was asking you with two outs in the prior inning. You yep. said that A&M was a good team that can hit the ball where it's pitched. All the good teams and the good players that hit for a high average as a team and both the player. You see them, they get thrown a fastball away. They don't try to pull it. They go with it. They hit it to the opposite field. And if the ball's pitched inside, lots of times they pull the ball. And so you got to be a complete hitter. If you're up there just trying to pull the ball on every pitch, you get a lot of weak ground outs. You'll roll over a lot of balls. But just watch big league games. Watch the best hitters in college baseball and watch how they spray the ball to all fields because you got to learn how to hit it where it's pitched. If not, you won't ever hit for a high average. Here's Josh Lemus making his 55th start of the season. Originally started his collegiate career at the University of North Carolina. Transferred back home. He's from Potomac, Maryland. Not that far from campus, the pitch. And this one is lifted into right field and right at Nick Banks. One down. George Mason not, trying not to waste a leadoff single as Montefusco comes to the plate now. Told you earlier that Montefusco is a two way player bat for himself in college baseball. If you're not aware, the DH is in effect, but by taking away the designated hitter that means that George Mason won't be able to use it the entire game. So that will add to the complexity when Bill Brown if he wants to take Montefusco out of the game or pinch hit for him late in the game. First pitch is a strike. You see Long's breaking ball. I mean, we've seen this change up in fastball too. He's got a tight breaking ball not your typical big overhand curveball with a lot of break. It's more of a tight slider cutter type break. It's short. There it is again. <laughs> Montefusco was a DH yesterday. He went 0 for 3. And this one lifted into foul territory. Lankford calls everybody off. Two down. Two down for Toto. Hey, as you watch college baseball over the course of this weekend, 64 teams to start the weekend in the postseason, 16 different sites. You can keep up with everything online. The bases loaded channel and on ESPN3. You might pay close attention if you're a clothing nerd like me at the uniforms. I love these George Mason uniforms. Yeah. Simple, clean. I like Rice's new uniform too, the new jersey. Yeah. So that's that's a good look too. 
Lance Berkman inspired Owls on a bat for Wayne Graham's Rice Owls will be in action tonight against Texas. And then you see some different kind of stuff. Mississippi State's got a weird looking uniform. Louisville does too. I'm not sure. It's kind of like an old throwback Astros yeah. type from, you know, the, the 80s, I guess it is. No disrespect to the Bulldogs, but I think they're rocking the uh, beer league softball uniforms yeah, for it, the most it, part. That's what it kind of looks like, yeah. Out of play, and they count two balls and a strike. Yeah, and when, and when their closer holder last year and Big West Ray oh, had yeah. the long hair and the beards last year, they kind of look like uh, kind of beer league softball players right. or truck drivers, <laughs> whatever you want to say. <laughs> Those are some big boys. Well, whatever you're going to say about West Ray, just make sure that he's not with an earshot. Oh, exactly. That's that's Mr. West when you're in person with him. He's a he's a big fella. Hey, we could be set up for an Ole Miss Mississippi State Super Regional. Upsets continue throughout college baseball. Florida State is done. Two and through the first 17 innings played by Florida State, they didn't score a run. Yeah. And Alabama nearly lost their mind. That was like watching the Hindenburg today. Oh yeah. That was a base hit. <laughs> A walk, a hit by pitch, a walk. Florida State pinch ran for their best hitter to start that inning, took their senior out of the game, and it was his spot that came up oh, at the end. At the end of the game. Yeah. I mean, Alabama takes a very comfortable, and this, and in today's game, six to nothing in the last inning is a huge lead, and they had to hang on with everything they had just to win six to five. Runner on for Toto. There he goes, and it's fouled back to the screen. So we'll do it again with. Chris Cook returning to the bag. Cook, one of the senior leaders on this team, a fifth-year senior. His dad, Terry, played baseball at Navy, a retired Marine. There he goes again, and it's to the left side and through, just under the glove of Alamon. And George Mason is in business here. Two on with two out. This is what George Mason needs to do. Constant pressure. Get some production from the bottom, then the middle, hopefully. Pretty good pitch. Ball's down. More middle of the plate, but down. But Toto kind of rolls over it and just past a diving Alamon out into left field. Alamon probably the best defensive infielder for Texas A&M. Started at second yesterday. It's short today. Mason looking for some offense here in the bottom of the second. They turn to Mick Foley now. He's only hitting 216 on the season. But Foley is hitting 313 with runners in scoring position. Maybe it's a matter of focus because it's only hitting a buck 70 in other scenarios. Pennsylvania kid with two on and two out in a three nothing game. Off the thumbs. Yeah. That's a good pitch. It's a good hard fastball. 91 miles an hour. And you're right. That might have hit in between his hands. That was so far inside. If that had been a piece of lumber, you know what that would have done. It would have broke right in half. Grayson Long with an 0-2 count. Plenty of options here. Looks like he's going away with something. Yep. Saw the catcher Stein rock to the outside corner. So he missed with the fastball. Missed a strike zone, hit his spot, and now the count one and two. George Mason had three hits total in last night's loss to Rice. They've got three today, but unable to do anything with the two here in the second. They leave a pair stranded and the first strikeout from the big right-hander, Grayson Long. Part of the Aggies lineup as we head to the third. Hey, Banks. Have a seat and let me make you uncomfortable. Up those grades, son or the only position you'll be playing in college is sitting on me. You're still awake? Have a seat on old Mr. Bench. At least your buns will fall asleep. <laughs> is this the one about the high school hotshot who gets benched in college? Hey, man, T, who the It's a tearjerker! Is the economy hurting your sales? Is it tough getting new customers? Get unlimited hot sales leads, mailing lists, email lists, plus free background searches, free business credit reports, even free CRM. Any lists you need. Businesses, new businesses, homeowners, new movers. Find new customers. Grow your sales. Get hot sales leads. 
infofree.com slash free. That's infofree.com slash free. Shannon Palmer's been good for our business here at BCR Realtors. She's always flexible when it comes to working with our schedule, and she helps our business grow. Working with Shannon and Suddenlink has always been beneficial for our company. She has consistently helped us to grow our market base and has always been quick to respond anytime we might have a question or concern. Hi, I'm Shannon Palmer. Call me to find out how our networks and our specialized programming can work for your business. Suddenlink Media, we reach your customers. The NCAA Baseball Regionals is presented by the Quicksilver Card from Capital One. Earn 1.5% cash back on every purchase. And in part by five expectation shattering models from Buick. Your kind of luxury. Welcome back to Reckling Park in Houston, Texas, on the campus of Rice University, 3C Texas AM. Leading four seed George Mason three nothing as we head to the top of the third inning. Tom Hart alongside Ben McDonald. Glad to have you with us today. It'll be Rice in Texas in the nightcap. This is Cole Lankford. First pitch strike from big right hander Anthony Montefusco. Lankford singled and scored in the first inning. The top three hitters for Texas A&M all reached base and all came around to score. In the opening frame against Montefusco. And so big number seven rocks and fires again, and another 90 mile an hour fastball from Anthony Montefusco. Yeah, you see Montefusco looks like he's getting to a little bit of a rhythm. You know, that first three batters all got base hits. You mentioned it double by Alamon, both Burke and Langford single, and all of them were hit hard. It looks like he's starting to settle in a little bit now, is exactly what he needs to do. Curveball into right. One down. Bracket time. Rice beat George Mason in the nightcap last night, 7 to 2, in a game that was a lot closer than the final score indicates. Rice blew up in the eighth inning. Texas took care of Texas A&M. They led 7 to 1 after two, and the Aggies could never catch up. So later on tonight, scheduled for 8 o'clock Eastern. On ESPN 3 and the Longhorn Network, it'll be Rice in Texas. This is an elimination game. The winner stays alive to play tomorrow at 4 o'clock Eastern against the loser of the nightcap. Logan Nottebrook, another first pitch strike. Montefusco has thrown first pitch strikes to 11 of the 13 that he's faced. Well, that's him. I mean, he's a strike thrower, likes to work ahead. That's what he does. And then, you know, he gives up a lot of hits for that reason, but again, doesn't beat himself. You're not going to see him walk a lot of guys unless he wants to pitch around someone, but going to throw a lot of first pitch fastball strikes. Then he'll come back with a change up, especially to left handers and more of a breaking ball to the right handed hitters. Not a Brook has battled his way through injuries, a back and a wrist injury. Got off to a great start. Those injuries really slowed him down over the middle part of the season and back to swinging the bat well lately. Junior college transfer. Left side and that gets right by both of them. Fernandez cut off gum that may have distracted the shortstop. He couldn't find it and Logan Notterbrook reaches. This a ball probably I mean should have been caught by Fernandez. You know, and you're right. Fernandez kind of gets in the way of gum. Once Fernandez misses it, gum's got no chance to catch it. But you can't give a team like Texas A&M that can really hit the baseball. You can't give them extra at bats, extra outs, because when you do, lots of times they can make you pay for it. Official score rules that a base hit for Logan Nottebrook. And with one out, Nick Banks comes to the plate. First pitch swinging. Nice pickup at first goes to second for one. They can't turn two, but they get the lead runner as Foley makes the charging play. That's a really heads up nice play by Foley. Charges it, realizes it's going to be a high hop. He's on his horse right away, and his momentum takes him toward the 
the middle of the infield. Watch him. His momentum's going towards second, so might as well go ahead and get the lead out whenever you can. Of course, being left-handed, that helps a lot. Doesn't have to throw across his body. And with two down, Troy Stein comes up. Remember, he turned his ankle going around first after his RBI single his first time up. But he's a catcher, so he's supposed to play hurt. Runner goes. Toto's throw is wide of the bag. And banks in with a stolen base. Not as good a throw as Toto had earlier, but it still nearly got him. Yep, he's almost got the tag right there on the feet, lower part of the body. And Texas A&M doesn't steal a lot of bases. That's only their 63rd base on the year, but they still at a pretty high percentage, though. Whenever they do decide to run 63 for 82 now. That's something that you pointed out to me when we talk big picture nationally that may surprise folks about Louisville. Yeah. We all know Louisville can pitch and they can hit a little bit too, but look at their stolen bases, 120 something stolen bases for Louisville. And those are the kind of things you start to look at when you start to talk about being able to manufacture runs and do different things. The teams that can put extra pressure on you with team speed, like a Louisville, you know, they can steal a base when they need to. Some of the guys on that team can really run and that's so valuable to be able to do different things to manufacture runs. Three balls and no strikes now to Troy Stein. Remember, it was Vanderbilt last year with, with Tony Kemp and all the guys that could really run. And the ball had AstroTurf in Nashville. They were really, really hard to beat. But Louisville went in there last year in the Super and beat them. Stein jumps all over that 3-0 pitch. Tobin will run out of room. It's off the middle of the wall. Banks comes around to score. Texas A&M up 4-0 and a ringing double from Troy Stein. Well, whatever Troy Stein did to his leg, it certainly didn't affect his bat. I mean, he crushed this ball. I thought for sure this ball was leaving the yard. 3-0 swing, gets a fastball mill in, and watch this turn. I mean, that's bat speed right there. Ball's not carrying too good today. You see the left fielder Tobin going back, and it's just off the bottom of the wall. Those are the things you can do when you're ahead three to nothing. You can be aggressive on the base pass. You can steal a base, and you can turn a guy loose on a 3-0 tight count. It's a fourth double in the last eight games for Stein. Now Patrick McClendon looks at a breaking ball. Four runs on eight hits for Texas A&M. They only had one run on seven hits in the entire game yesterday against the Longhorns. Back to back curveballs, one and one. McClendon batting in the eight hole for Texas A&M. He's hitting six different spots in this lineup, which has been shuffled on a daily basis. And he gets the bunt down with two out, but can't get there in wow, time. what a good play Tried by Tried to Montefusco. bunt for a hit with two down, and Anthony Montefusco pounced on that one, jumping off the mound. You're the right. top third of the George Mason lineup. Montefusco looks no worse for wear, gets out of trouble. Rule 66. Baseball is a game. Best played like a kid. Sunday Night Baseball. Pirates Dodgers at 8. Presented by Taco Bell. Baseball rules on ESPN. Summer starts now with hot deals this weekend at Bass Pro Shops, like Redhead Stockton Polo Shirts for under $10, the new 10-bearing Pro Light Baitcast Reel for under $60, and sign up for email to get a special $10 in-store coupon good for this weekend. across the nation. Steel Dealer Days are happening now. 
with great values on the number one selling brand of outdoor power equipment in America. It's the best time to shop our full line of grass trimmers, easy handling blowers, and legendary chainsaws. Plus, you can still register to win a piece of our $100,000 product sweepstakes. Hurry, steal dealer days end soon. Don't settle for a slow computer. Just go to MyCleanPC.com to get your free computer diagnosis. First, we'll tell you what's slowing down your computer. Then activate the MyCleanPC.com software to optimize your computer performance. I got a free diagnosis for my computer, and they told me exactly what was wrong with it. My computer is running faster and smoother than it ever has before. My computer is 100% faster. Get your free computer diagnosis at MyCleanPC.com. Well, a nice departure for the Aggie faithful to see the offense turn around. Yesterday against Texas held a one run on seven hits. One for eight risp, and that's already much better today through just three turns at the plate. It'll be Willis, Gum, and Fernandez for George Mason. Back to the top of the lineup. And Luke Willis looks at a strike. He's looking for his first hit here in this tournament. 0 for 5. Willis was the most outstanding player in the Atlantic 10 tournament last week in St. Louis. Backhanded attempt by Alamon. Tried to jeter it across the diamond and couldn't get enough on it. Infield single for Luke Willis. Let's take a look at the Corvallis Regional Bracket. NCAA Baseball Regionals are presented by Capital One. All games also live on Watch ESPN. Oregon State had to sneak by North Dakota State. And UC Irvine took care of UNLV 10 to 3. So it'll be North Dakota State and UNLV in an elimination game in action right now. And then tonight at 11 o'clock Eastern from Corvallis, Oregon State and UC Irvine. They got another great pitching performance at Oregon State last mm -hmm. night. I mean, it seems like they always do. Kind of like Rice in that regard. I mean, you just expect a weekend guy for Oregon State to give you eight plus innings and 10 strikeouts. Yeah, I mean, Oregon State's for real in a lot of ways, not just their pitching, plenty of offense, defense. I mean, they're the. A lot of people got them picked as a favorite. Yeah, Michael Conforto, their fantastic outfielder, is predicted as a not only a first round pick in next week's. Major League draft, but perhaps a top 10 pick. Yeah, I mean, he's going to be a high guy. I mean, you talk about Jace Fry, 11 and 1, with a 1-4-3, one, one of their starters. Ben Wetzler had a .76 ERA in the regular season. I mean, .76 as a starter? Are you kidding me? He was 11 and 1 as well. You think the Phillies will draft Wetzler again? I doubt it. <laughs> Probably not. Here's Brandon Gum, the shortstop, and a count three and one. Wetzler had to miss chunk of the early part of the season for Oregon State after the Phillies turned him in for using an advisor as an agent after last year's draft and refusing to sign for the with the Phillies and that's really what had most people especially on the college side well in baseball as a whole upset with the Phillies it it wasn't that perhaps the rules were skirted it's that the Phillies reacted after he didn't sign with oh them. yeah it was sour grapes yeah. is exactly what it was you know and that's unfortunate you know I mean all your top picks have advisors. I mean, everybody has one. They talk to agents. I mean, it's just the way it is. And, the, and the, a lot of the clubs know that. But yeah, it was sour grapes on the Phillies part, unfortunately. Here's Childress, uh, Texas A&M head coach, also the pitching coach out to Haverworth, Grayson Long, a leadoff single, and then a walk. And that will bring Blaze Fernandez to the plate. Rough day for national seeds. First time the three national seeds lost in the same day since national seeds were added in 99. That happened yesterday. Florida State lost to Alabama in that elimination game. And the SEC, a record 10 bids, went just five and four on the first day of the tournament. How did you get ready for the Major League Draft? Now, you know, from, from the standpoint of this is the next stage of my life. This is a serious negotiation, and I've never been in this room before. 
I've never been in this scenario. I tried to stay out of it. You know, what, what helped me is I had an advisor, too. I had Scott Boris, and, you know, he worked with my dad through the process, and my dad was made out to be the bad guy for the longest time where I could keep my eligibility in case I was going to go back to school. I had no intentions of going back to school, you know, but you work with an advisor. Your dad is the bad guy. He does the negotiations for a while. But then when it got to the point it got to, you know, more than we could handle, we had to go ahead and, uh, you know, and get the agent involved at that point. But I just tried to stay out of it. You know, I wanted nothing to do with the, you know, I was just like, and it sounds like a, an old cliche to say it, but I just wanted to play. I wanted to yeah. get it wrapped up. I'm a 21-year-old kid, and I just want to go play baseball, but you got to let the business side, you know, it's a business at that point. It's what it is. Blaze Fernandez singled his first time up. George Mason has an opportunity here with two on and nobody out. What is different about the baseball side of things? It's not this way uh, with college football. It's not this way with college basketball. Is it you get drafted, and if your team is having success, you are still playing your sport, whether at a super regional college World Series level, and that pitch gets away from the catcher's stein, allowing both runners to advance. And, and that, I think, is what it could be a real challenge for a 20, 21-year-old kid. Well, I mean, and at that time, the draft was in the middle of the college World Series. I remember having to go to a press conference that morning around midday and then pitching a ball game that afternoon it's really tough i mean you want to get the draft i wish they could do it at a different time you know maybe during the dead week sometimes i don't know where they can do it where it wouldn't affect the kids but it's a, you know it's a lot on their minds right now the draft is coming up and it's good to get those kind of things out of the way where you can enjoy your postseason a wild pitch came after the walk to brandon gum george mason with its best scoring opportunity yeah, I mean, this is it for George Mason. Again, I mean, they have to take advantage of their opportunities. They may not get a whole lot of them, and this is certainly gold. And if they're second and third, and nobody out. Full count to Fernandez, now three and two. Mason only had as many as two base runners on at the same time once yesterday. They were 0 for run with runners in scoring position today. That was the eighth inning when the first two men got on and came around to score, and Mason took a two to one lead. Then in the bottom of the eighth last night against Rice, the Owls sent 10 men to the plate. Scored six times and secured the opening round win. So Mason, as a team, just one for seven with runners in scoring position over the first 12 innings of this NCAA postseason. Fernandez sends it towards the home bullpen bangs off of the batting cages. Nice reminder on the side of that those batting cages Rice's success 2003 national champion as consistent as you will find in the regionals yeah. fourth longest active streak in the postseason it takes a big building to put all that information. On. <laughs> That's right. Through the left side Willis will score gum stopped at third and Mason is on the board on a second hit of the game from Fernandez. Team leading 41st RBI of the season for the third baseman. Well, we talked about George Mason. If they're going to be successful, it's going to be the top five of those guys are going to have to get it going. Well, it's happened so far in this inning. Willis gets a base hit, gum walks, and then Fernandez with a big RBI single and nobody out. Runners on first and third, an opportunity for a big inning for George Mason. Elsewhere in the tournament, Clemson is out. They went 0-2 for the first time since 1981. You know, you can tell, you know, we talked about the emotions for George Mason. Could they rebound after such an emotional loss last night where Gaynor just pitched his heart out and it was just taken away from him by Rice at the last second. But you can tell after a rough start, give up three runs in the first. Here's George Mason fighting back. Tucker Tobin is 0 for 4 here in Houston. And he is ahead in the count now 2-0. All of a sudden, Grayson Long, you know, behind in the count, pitching totally different than he did for the first two innings. There's a walk involved behind in the count to every batter so far. Here's a 2-0 count. And here's where the pitching depth comes into play, because if Texas A&M is going to win this thing, they're going to have to play through Monday night. And Ray, who's getting up in the bullpen, would be their Monday night starter. Mm -hmm. So Daniel Mangdom kind of hurt him a little bit by not getting out of the third inning. They would send Parker Ray tomorrow and then the other Ray on Monday. A lot of responsibility for starters throughout the postseason. 2-0 pitch. 
tailed away and now three balls and no strikes. Yeah, tough situation here. I mean, do you go get him? Do you leave him out there? How much confidence do you have in your offense at this point? You know, I, I got to believe Texas a and is going to score a few more runs on George Mason, but again, you just can't afford to get too, too much, you know, give up too many runs. Yeah, I think, you know, handicapping this day coming in, I think maybe tonight it might be the first team to three runs. Yeah. With great pitching lined up, and this one, you know, it could be seven runs to win it. Oh, yeah, yeah. I expected a high scoring game today. There's no what a grab it. and a chance for two, a double play turned by McClendon. Right. They've only right. turned 32 double plays on this season. They were dead last in the SEC. It's been a real Achilles heel for A&M this season, but McClendon turns it. Just a wonderful play. Look at the extension right there by McClendon, but bad base running, unfortunately, for Fernandez, who just got the big hit. He's at first base. You got to see the line drive. You got to see it go through in that situation, but he was off, was Fernandez. He thought the ball was through, and it wasn't, and that is huge for A&M. Chris Cook singled his first time up. Got a kind of a funky stance with the bat head in front of his eyes. And that one is ruled foul. I thought that was inside the chalk. Gosh, that was close. Yeah, you're right. Cook does have a funky. The bat kind of leans towards the pitcher, the top half of the bat. But as the pitch starts to come to the plate just before, he'll go ahead and level it off and get him a more conventional batting stance he leads the nation in hit by pitch 31 times he's been plunked this season well you can see why I mean he's his arms his hands are literally over the top of the plate see how he leans that bat forward that was a good look at it right there that's very unusual look at that got it pointed out towards the pitcher but you watch him as a pitcher winds up he'll go ahead and square it up right about now there it is Statham waits for it what was a golden opportunity for George Mason? Nets just one run on a couple of hits. This play by Patrick McClendon is one for the highlight reels. A double play turned by the Aggies. At GMC, incredible thinking always comes first. Like the GMC Sierra, the first 4x4 pickup to offer a gas V8 engine that gets an EPA-estimated 22 highway miles per gallon. The first to offer an innovative cargo bed with LED lighting. And now, during the GMC Spring Sales Event, all 2014 GMC Sierras are specially priced, so you get thousands off MSRP. This month, use your special value pricing to get over 8,300 total value on this specially equipped GMC Sierra SLE. Hurry, offer ends June 2nd. Each year, 95% of homeowners won't have a claim. That's why Allstate Claim-Free Rewards gives you money back for every year you don't have one. And why, if you're part of the other 5%, Allstate offers Claim Rate Guard, so your rates won't go up just because of the claim. No matter what comes your way, your home protects you. Protect it back. Allstate Home Insurance, from an Allstate agent. After 10 years of providing top-notch customer service and quality products, we're still rated number one by the Wall Street Journal for do-it-yourself paint chip repairs. Our signature dab, smear, and blend process allows you to make professional permanent repairs on your car. And now our squirt and squeegee method makes it even easier to fix the most heavily chipped vehicles. Simply squirt a little paint on the panel, squeegee it smooth over the chips, then blend as usual. Go to drcolorchip.com. That's drcolorchip.com. Work from Patrick McClendon. What was a great opportunity for George Mason results in just a single run, and that may have an impact long term on AM throughout this weekend because Grayson Long was really struggling. He got some help from his infield. Yeah, big time. McClendon just stabbed at it and caught it. And a big base running error by Fernandez for George Mason just pretty much shut that inning down. Yeah, remember that play. Happened in the third inning, but that could be the difference in this ballgame. Eight hole hitter Jace Statham leads off the fourth for Texas A&M. He is 0 for 1, trying to drag his way on.
couple of bunt attempts for Texas A&M, the last two batters. So that's probably something you'd expect to see more out of the burnt orange worn by the Longhorns. They lead the nation and sacrifice bunts. Swing it away, little one hopper and an easy one for Montefusco. Bracket time. NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One. All games also live on Watch ESPN. They had some weather issues earlier today in Nashville. I understand Xavier knocked off Clemson 6-4. to four. Clemson 2 and barbecue for the first time since Danny Ford was their football coach. Yeah. Vandy in number two Oregon tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern on ESPNU. You know, a lot of number one seeds will throw off their number two or three guy in the first round game. Not Vanderbilt. They ran Tyler Beatty out there. A lot of folks think that might be the best game he threw all season long. Beatty threw, uh, struck out 14, yeah. I believe, last night. Eight innings pitch, 14 punch outs. And so, you know, he's been a guy that's not put the numbers up that they thought he could put up, but he's still very, very good with a big upside. Breaking ball missed inside to Cray Bratson. That upside will be one that's discussed in draft rooms next Thursday as Beatty is major league maybe major league ready but draft eligible ball up the middle off the bat of Bradson he is two for two what about all the success that Tim Corbin has had sending players overall but especially pitchers to the next level David Price um, well he drew some attention yesterday by plucking a couple of Red Sox yeah yeah he hit big poppy <laughs> he did. poppy he, declared war on yeah him. poppy said basically it's on now you know yeah, that was maybe some retaliation from, uh, you know, a week or two ago when they played each other and somebody stole a base up real big and a little chirping going on. But I like it, though. If you're going to hit, hit the biggest, meanest, baddest guy on the team. And Big Poppy, certainly that guy. There would be no question what you're trying to accomplish. Lake Alamont is two for two today. He doubled his first time up on a full count pitch. His defensive versatility, versatility is really aided Texas A&M here today with Logan Taylor really having a poor day yesterday after trying to come back from a dislocated kneecap. He just didn't look right, and so Rob Childress won't play him today. And it remains to be seen if Taylor will see the field the rest of this weekend. Yeah, Alamond got some time there. You know, got some time there last year a little bit. And another big hit, Lemus to the wall, and he hauls it in. You said it earlier this game, the ball's just not carrying today. Yeah, you can tell. I mean, there's not much wind out there, but it's just like the ball's just not going anywhere. Two balls hit today that I thought had a chance of getting out, including that. But nice play by Lemus. Got a good read off the bat. <laughs> Lemus and Willis were really busy in the outfield yesterday for George Mason because their starter Jared Gaynor let Rice put the ball in play and they made plays behind him seemingly all night until Rice adjusted in the eighth inning to his soft stuff. Gaynor was magnificent and I was talking with pitching coach Steve Hay before the game today I said you know folks who didn't watch that game or aren't aware they're going to see that line score as you and I discussed mm -hmm. and say well you know like that kid didn't throw very well. I mean, he had Rice on the brink of the loser's bracket. Oh, no. Is that fourth, fourth trip through, as good teams do, they figured it out. Yeah, they made some adjustments, and it took them a while. And that's why, you know, it's so tough to get guys out. And that's what we talked about yesterday. That's what separates relievers from starters. You've got to find a way to be able to go through that lineup two or three times. He went through it three times, only gave up one run. But it was the fourth time through in a veteran team in Rice that finally said, you know what? This is what he does. We've seen enough of it now. Now let's make some adjustments, and they did it in a big way. Popped up to shallow center. Luke Willis has it. And they strand a runner here in the fourth by just eight pitches. Cheer for the stumbles. The Heat should have had bats. And the tears that linger. For in those moments, greatness lies. There, 
you will find the provoked, the determined, the unified. It's in those moments that champions are born. During the Suddenlink Big Switch event, switch to internet speeds five times faster than DSL with enough bandwidth to power all your devices. Don't miss this big opportunity to join the thousands every month who switch to our superior fiber-rich network. Suddenlink makes it easy. Some things are just better with friends at Yesterday's Bar and Grill, just down from University of Texas on Texas Avenue. During the Suddenlink Big Switch event, switch to home phone with unlimited U.S. long distance, innovative calling features, and the protection of E911. Don't miss this big opportunity to join the thousands every month who switch to a better phone service for less money. Suddenlink makes it easy. Early offense today from Houston as Texas A&M pushed three runs across in the opening frame. Alamon Burke, Lankford, and the Aggies love it. Bracket time. Rice and Texas both the winners yesterday in the opening round here from the Houston Regional. This is an elimination game. The loser starts their summer. The winner stays alive to play tomorrow at 4 o'clock. He's going to take on the loser among Rice and Texas. Regional finals Sunday 8 Eastern and then we'll be pushed to an if necessary game if the losers bracket team can find a win. Lemus, Montefusco and Toto. Brink of elimination now another number one national seed Florida trails North Carolina 4 nothing in the seventh inning in Gainesville. Arizona State is done. You know, we were talking about uh, George Mason's classic looking uniforms, this nice, clean look. A lot of times in football Saturdays, you might have a helmet game where teams are respected because of their history and their pedigree. We're seeing a lot of great uniforms and powerhouse programs exit early I mean obviously Florida State I know Clemson wasn't having a fantastic year but for the Tigers to go to and barbecue was unexpected absolutely you know and, and in Florida you know you know a lot of folks I know I was concerned about Florida hope you know for the Florida fans hopefully they can come back but you know when you look at their numbers they just don't pop at you you know and, and part of that is because they played the toughest schedule in the country they played more top 100 teams in the RPI than anybody did this year so battle tested they are but listen when you hit 260 and 270 you know and the ERA is towards the middle to the bottom you know in the SEC you start to wonder and, and look they had a I mean, when you win the SEC and you want it like they I mean you have a good team but you got to keep it going. You know, the other part of that, and we'll, we'll have this discussion during Texas and Rice in the nightcap. They met three times in midweek games this season. Mm -hmm. Florida really built its RPI and strength of schedule thanks to midweek wins oh, against yeah. both Florida State and Miami. But midweek college baseball is totally different than a weekend series. And, and that's the point I try to make. I mean, I don't think you should get the same value for winning a mid midweek game as you do a weekend game. Because, you know, when I look at strength of schedule, I think that's where it's skewed. Because I don't care that you went into Rice, you know, and you beat Rice on a Wednesday night uh, when Rice threw it, their number seven guy, a freshman, that they were trying to see if he could pitch at all, you know, or you went into Texas or you went into another big powerhouse program and you won a midweek game. That doesn't give you the same value. I want to know that you beat their ace. I want to know that you beat their number two or three guy on the weekend. I think that's how it should be done. Texas pitching coach Skip Johnson has some aces. Yes, he does. I'll send another one. Parker French to the mound today. It's Blake Fox in the nightcap. Fox is undefeated for Rice. Yeah, I love your point. If folks at home aren't familiar with how college baseball works, you have typically three starters that throw on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, mm -hmm. with your ace in most cases throwing Friday night, first game of a weekend series. Montefusco goes down looking. And a weekend series is when conference play 
takes place. Or early in the season, you want to play a big series against someone outside of your region, you'll play three. Midweek is usually safe for, you know, a local team, a lesser opponent. That's right. Long with a good breaking ball just paints the outside corner to Montefusco right there. But, I, you know, I agree. You know, and sometimes when you get a smaller school, go plays a, you know, a powerhouse in a week, the smaller school will sacrifice and take one of their aces, you know, and try to beat that powerhouse school where the powerhouse school is throwing, again, somebody further down. It's a guy that can pitch a little bit, but he's not one of their aces. And, of course, that's big. There's a lot of gambling going on now because as a smaller school, you can get a lot of RPI points by beating that big school. Ray Toto, the catcher, looks at a pitch low and in. Like, I want to know you beat them on the weekend. For instance, I knew UL, although they lost yesterday and won today, I knew they were for real because early in the year, Alabama, when Alabama was playing real well, they went into UL for a three-game series, and it was on the weekend when they all matched up their aces against one another, and UL wins two out of three. So at that point, I started to say, hey, UL's got a quality team, you know, and then UL comes to LSU, and they beat LSU in a midweek game. But at that point, people started to recognize UL as a powerhouse. Texas A&M did a lot of great work over the course of weekends. Series wins against Florida, Vandy, Mississippi State, and LSU. And they did it without much success at all in the first game of those series. Their Friday nights, they went just 1-9 and nine in SEC play, 13-7 and seven over the final two games of each SEC series, which if you apply that to this weekend, would give Aggie faithful something to hold their head high about. Yeah, they lost the first game, but can still come through the loser's bracket. It's something that they are familiar with doing in terms of bouncing back. Toto looks at ball four. It's a third walk issued by Grayson Long, the second this inning. For more coverage of the Division I baseball tournament and interactive brackets, go to NCAA.com. You may see that Youngstown State won its first ever NCAA tournament game, eliminating Indiana State today in Bloomington, 5 2 final. And Dallas Baptist, the two seed at uh, Fort Worth, trails Siena 8 7 in the ninth. And old hitter Mick Foley looks at the first offering inside 1 0. Grayson Long has. Failed to find that rhythm. He's faced at least four batters in every inning. Five in the second, five in the third. This is his fourth in the fourth. Already at 77 pitches. And remember, he needed a big double play to bail him out in the third. Yeah, there's his numbers. You see, he's a few more strikes than balls. 77 already. Not good for AM, especially if they want to continue through this tournament. They do win the day. You want to try to save as much pitching as you can. He's probably only got another inning left in him, you know. He may be close to 90 pitches by the end of the next inning. George Mason has made him work. First time through the lineup, they went to just one three-ball count. The second time, they went to five three-ball counts. So that pitch count has really been extended on Long, who gets a check swing and a strikeout of Foley. It's his third K for the Aggie right-hander. Well, he's made some really good pitches to Foley, both inside, four-seam fastball, just right in on the hands of Foley. And what led to that was a last at bat. He threw Foley in that fastball around the inside corner that Foley took for strike three. So in the back of Foley's mind, he's like, he's coming in there again, and he didn't want to strike out again looking, so he has an emergency hack at it. Didn't look too good. Luke Willis at the plate, looks at a breaking ball. Another first time winner today, the Campbell Camels knocked off ODU four to one in 12 innings for the first ever NCAA regional win. For the Camels, hashtag roll humps. <laughs> I like that. Yanked foul, ball in the strike to the leadoff man Willis who was one for two. Southeastern Louisiana eliminated Bryant today, two to one. 
Yeah, big win for them. Off-speed pitch for the second.